Coming up on this week's Gadget Show Web TV, John's reviewing Samsung's Galaxy Tab, and I bring you this week's best tech news and head to Rare's new studio in Birmingham. Hello and welcome to this week's Web TV. Now coming up later in the show, I'm going to be heading over to Rare's Birmingham studio to take a look at Connect Sports, one of the must-have titles for Microsoft's controller-free device. But first, John's looking at the Samsung Galaxy Tab, which is hotly tipped to be a real contender to the iPad, but with its smaller 7-inch screen, working on the Android system and doing things that the iPad can't, does it really live up to all of its hype? The new Samsung Galaxy Tab is the most eagerly awaited of the current crop of Android tablets. I was particularly keen to try it out, not just because it's so promising, but also because at its 7-inch screen size, it fits almost exactly in size between an iPad and an iPod Touch, an iPhone, or any other smartphone. And so how would the 7-inch form factor stack up for tablets? Well, on first impressions, really very well indeed, actually, because uh, in weight terms, it's 380 grams, which is uh, only just over half the weight of an iPad, and it does make it a lot easier to hold for long periods. But the extra size of the screen makes tasks like web browsing, movie watching, or e-reading a much easier experience. If anything, the aspect ratio of the screen makes it more suitable for movie watching than the web browsing and e-reading, because when you hold it portrait-wise, it does feel just a little bit too narrow. Having said that, the LCD is a reasonable quality, although if you're after higher definition and AMOLED, apparently there's a version that incorporates those features next year. Typing on the screen is pretty good too. You get portrait and landscape keyboards and uh, a bit of haptic feedback to help you along. Battery life's pretty good too. You get seven or eight hours of use and a 62 and a half day quoted standby time, from which you get more or less instant on, in my experience, which is useful. It does quite a few things better than the iPad. It's got forward-facing and backward-facing cameras. Not a particularly good one in the case of the main camera. It's just three megapixels, but that's better than nothing. You get uh, an SD card slot, which is handy. You get Bluetooth. It actually does all the things you'd expect it to do, including transferring files. You can access the device's file structure, which is useful. And the Galaxy Tab can also be used to make phone calls. In fact, I think they've been a bit too bashful about this. They should have incorporated an earpiece in the case, because if you're receiving an unexpected call, you don't want the sound of the person you're talking to to be coming through the speaker. Hello. Hello, Tom. Obviously, you could connect the uh, supplied headset or a Bluetooth headset or something like that, but I think we'll all gradually get used to the idea of uh, answering occasional calls on tablet-sized devices. It doesn't really look that ridiculous. I mean, we're used to people wandering around talking to themselves on hands-freeze. The Galaxy Tab is approved by Google for use on the Android market, so you get access to plenty of apps. The ones I tried worked pretty well, actually, including the FT app that's bundled with the device. It's not perfect, though. Uh, web browsing, although it's good in some respects, you get flash video support, so it'll uh, play back videos on our website, for example, and uh, it also reformats text well to fit the screen. It overall feels rather slow compared to web browsing on an iPad, which clearly isn't good enough. Also, I'd like to see a proper USB socket, not just the micro SD card slot. And I do hope Samsung commit themselves to the device and push through all the appropriate Android updates and so forth. Samsung's own app store currently only has six apps in it, so clearly they need to pull their corporate fingers out there. Although overall, I think the Galaxy Tab is a very well-proportioned device indeed, there is one aspect of it which isn't at all well-proportioned, and that's the price. I think Samsung should have priced it halfway in between an iPod Touch and an iPad, somewhere around £300 or so. Instead, they've gone for a rather rich starting price of £469, and with a load of new competition coming from other Android tablets in the new year, I think that price will have to come down. Important aspect of the price aside, though, I think the Galaxy Tab is a very welcome new addition to the world of tablets. Right, it's time for the news, and first up, Orange has announced its price plans for the new subsidised iPad, but sadly, it's not that cheap.
They will be offering all of the iPad models. The 16 gig will be £199, the 32 gig will be £249, and the 64 gig £349. But you are going to have to shell out £25 a month for a 1 gig anytime data plan. You will, however, get included 1 gig allowance from midnight till 4 a.m. because that's Orange's quiet time data. On top of that, you'll be allowed their unlimited Wi Fi through BT Open Zone hotspots. But unfortunately, it isn't cheaper than buying an iPad outright. But it gives you the option if you don't want to fork out the full price initially. Next up, are mobile operators and Transport for London are close to agreeing a deal that will see mobile phone signal offered on the London Underground. It is expected that a deal will be signed within the next two weeks, and initially the trial will see Jubilee and Central Line converters so people can chat away on their morning commute. The Mayor of London is also hoping for a wider rollout in time for the Olympics. It would be great to see, as the issue of mobile signal on London Underground has been a big, big issue for many years, and it's one step in bringing the UK more in line with those more tech-developed nations such as Japan and South Korea. Rare are one of the legendary computer game developers of our time, with classics GoldenEye and Perfect Dark under their belt. But ever since their partnership with Microsoft, they started developing titles for Kinect. And their first title, Kinect Sports, has just hit the market. So when we found out that one of their officers was literally a stone's throw away from the Gadget Show Studios, we had to go and check it out. This is Rare's new office based in central Birmingham. Rare is one of the UK's long-standing games developers and this is their new second studio. It's the first time that the developers have actually ventured farther and beyond their Twycross headquarters. The first game these studios have been involved with is Connect Sports and this office has the task of developing the avatars and of course testing the games and DLC. So let's check out the studio. Hi Nick, great to meet you. Now can you tell me what you do here at Rare? Yeah, so I'm Connect Development Director, so I look out for the new technology that we're bringing into gaming and then look at the kind of games we can make with that, you know, sort of two, three years out sometimes from what you'd see as a consumer. Okay, can you, if you don't mind, give me a tour around the studio? Yeah, certainly. So, I don't know if you know but the Xbox Live avatars, uh, we created those for Microsoft a few years ago. Oh, okay. And so, we are now doing a lot of avatar work here. Again, sort of, you know, like props for the avatars, clothing, things like that. A lot of the things that you might buy if you're on Xbox Live will get developed in this room. So what was happening behind us here then? I guess is this the clothing aspect you were talking about? Yes, yeah. So it looks like there's some cricket clothing being created there. So you may see that popping up on Xbox Live in a few weeks. As well, obviously, we we don't actually do that much development, I would say, here. Most of that's done out of our headquarters in Twine Cross. And that's where we develop most of sports. Although we did do a lot of the testing for sports here. Okay. So, so there's another area for testing? Yes, there is, then. yeah. Oh, yeah, let's go and have a nosy. Okay. No, I haven't. This is all new. This is exciting. Right, well, you hand out in front then. Okay. And um, that's your handle here. Then select whichever game you fancy having a go at. Okay, let's try beach volleyball. I'll go easy on you, maybe. Yeah. Your hand in the air to your plate, there we go. So you can see, there's your avatar. Okay. There's me, I've got the ball. Yes, him! <laughs> <laughs> now, I'd like to introduce you to George, who is the creative director for Rare. George, Hi. lovely to meet you. Nice how are you doing? doing? Very good, thank you. Now, how did it come about, Rare and Connect? Oh, God, that's, a, that's an easy question to answer, actually. We got a phone call from somebody called Kudo, uh, okay. who's since, I think, become almost the face of, uh, of Connect around the world. Mm -hmm. um, around two years ago, uh, about October time, 2008, um, and he asked us to go and have a look at some technology that we're working on at, uh, in Redmond at Microsoft. So okay. I went along with three other guys, and uh, we had a look at this thing that was held together with sellotape and duct tape and literally falling off the telly. Um, and uh, he showed us one or two demos and asked us if we were able to actually make any games with that kind of technology. And we said, after about five minutes of seeing the technology, we said, well, hell yes, we can make something Absolutely. really good with this. Um, so yes, yeah, so we went away, had a blank piece of paper, 
and just started developing lots of different ideas and, uh, and we eventually ended up with, uh, with what you see today, which is obviously Connect Sports. Which is amazing, I'm Thank loving you. it. And what do you think the future holds for Connect and the future of gaming? Um, we've released a bunch of different games uh, that are all very relatable, people understand the games. Um, we've got a lot of ideas that uh, I think we probably would have scared the audience with initially, so we had to start with something that was very um, easy user friendly, friendly, user yes, friendly and absolutely. easy to understand. Let's just say this is, um, you know, <clears throat> this is the first step and there's yeah. an awful lot more we can do. I must admit, having a go on this, I can't wait to see what the future holds. So thank you so much, George, for, for chatting to me. And, uh, Fancy a game of bowling? Yes, go on. You Let's go. go first. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Well, that's all we've got time for this week. We'll be back next week with our Christmas special web TV. Of course, remember you can see the main show Monday night at 8 p.m. on Channel 5, which is also going to be a fantastic Christmas special. We're going to be showing you the must-have gadget gifts, no matter who you're buying for. This is the only technology guide you're going to need of the festive season. John, Jason, Otis, Susie and myself will be searching high and low for the most high-tech, unique, intelligent, crazy and downright desirable gadgets of the season. It's definitely not one to miss. See you then.